Hi, everyone. Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. We have another question from a fellow boater. Douglas has a Freedom 36 sailboat. And Douglas asks, Jeff, I have a house battery of 200 amp hours and a Group 27 starter battery. He's got on board a 60 amp battery charger. I would like to maintain the starter battery with a Xantrax Echo Charge. Is this a good way to do it or should I use something else? We also have solar. Okay. All right. So let's put everything into context. Two battery banks. Uh, in this instance, uh, Douglas did mention that he had an AGM starter battery, but he didn't mention what his house battery was. So it could be flooded lead acid, it could be AGM. It doesn't really matter what the chemistry is because there's a solution for both. But let's assume in this case that both batteries are AGM batteries. So you should ideally have a battery charger, especially if both batteries are the same chemistry, one being housed at 200 amp hours and another battery being maybe 100 amp hours or whatever it is. You Generally, starter batteries are not measured in amp hours. They're measured in cold cranking amps or marine cranking amps. But you can have a group 27 starter battery that's AGM and you can have two group 27 deep cycle batteries that are also AGM. So the first thing I would probably consider is having a battery charger that has at least two lead output that would recharge when connected to shore power would recharge both batteries for an, with an AGM charge profile. Perfect. All right. Now, if we stayed connected at the dock all the time, that's what we would do. But, but how do we have one alternator charge two battery banks when the alternator only has one output? And the bigger question is, again, this is where it matters. Are both battery banks the same chemistry? If they are, and most of us are alternators connected to the engine battery, how do you have the engine battery recharge the house? A Xantrax Echo Charge is actually a directional battery combiner, meaning it will only it will charge one battery from another battery if and only if there's a charging voltage and it's directional. So for example, if in this instance, in Douglas's boat, his starting battery is the one that's connected to the alternator, he could take a Xantrax echo charge and recharge the house battery from the engine battery. Now the challenge with an echo charge is it's only 15 amps. It can't, it doesn't modulate voltage. So whatever voltage is at the starter battery is the voltage that will be at the house battery. So that's why with an echo charge, you need to make sure that you have similar battery capacity. That's really essential. Some boaters would put a battery combiner in this instance, potentially a battery combiner that has higher amperage. You know, maybe a Blue Seas makes different ones. One about 60, 65 amp, 120 amp. There's even, I think, a 300 amp. So you could have different ways of sharing a charge voltage. Or alternatively, what you could do if you're only worried about having the batteries be in parallel from the alternator, i.e. having the alternator charge two battery banks, you could also put in what's called a battery isolator. Battery isolator is a device that will have one input to two or three outputs. And so you could have an alternator that is actually recharging both the engine battery and the house battery directly without the use of a battery combiner. There are pros and cons to both. There's whole videos on our website just on this purpose. That being said, a battery isolator is a little bit more challenging to install than a battery combiner. If I was Douglas on a Freedom 36 sailboat, uh, what I would probably end up doing is probably a battery combiner, assuming the battery chemistry is the same. And if it isn't the same, then I would probably use what's called a DC to DC charging converter. And this is where you can have an input voltage, whatever it is, based on the charging profile that's coming to that battery. And then you can literally change that charging profile and have it be change and alter for the other battery bank. I'm a big fan. Uh, Victron makes those products. They're not that expensive. And that would be probably the ideal way. Now, what's the drawback? They're only limited, like an echo charge, instead of being limited to 15, they're limited to only 30 amps. So if you were considering a Xantrax echo charge at 15 amp, then a DC to DC charging converter rated at 30 amps would be obviously sufficient. And that's most likely what I would do because it's the simp It's gonna give you whatever you want to do. You've got the most amount of control and they're not that hard to wire. And they're also rate limited, you know? A DC to DC charging converter that's rated at 30 amps will never output 40 or 50 or 100 amps. 
And so when you're fusing those wires, you don't have to worry about having imbalanced battery banks that could have a huge amount of current flowing across that link. So probably instead of the Xantrax Echo Charge, I would go with a Victron DC to DC charging converter in this application. But there is also a need for the Xantrax Echo Charge. And to be honest, I have one on my boat. So again, it's not to say that there's something wrong with the Xantrax Echo Charge. It's about this specific application that Douglas had. If, especially if the battery chemistry is different, then I would absolutely, absolutely install the DC to DC charging converter. Thanks for asking the question, Douglas. And thanks everyone for watching. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.